Okay, so we're still on probability, but now we're looking at some different distributions that we could have studied earlier, but we uh, sort of ran out of time before the first test. Um, so in this distribution, we've got this word binomial. Let me change the word, to change it to pen. So I've got a binomial. So the prefix by indicates that there's going to be two. Okay, so when there are only two outcomes, or if you can redefine the question so that there are only two outcomes, because sometimes it just looks like there's more than two, but you can actually use the idea of the complement. Um, so once we have only two outcomes, you know, passing and failing, winning and losing, um, then we've got a binomial distribution. Okay, so copy that and come across. Okay, so consider the event that a child is born. There's only two outcomes, a boy or a girl. I know we're not going to go into all the other ch um, issues, but there's usually only a boy and a girl. So if there's two outcomes, it's a binomial distribution. If you consider the event, so that's the first one, if you consider the event, a die is tossed and you're just looking at numbers of sixes, obviously there are six different things that you could have, but you could redefine the question is you get a six or you get not a six. So now we've got two outcomes. So yes, there are six things that can happen, but the way you define it is a six or not a six, and now you have a binomial distribution. Okay, copy and come across. Okay, so looking, you know, what we want to do is make a connection with other things we've studied. So looking at a tree diagram for two children being born. Okay, so there's your first child, and there's the second child being born. So you've got boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. And these two things represent one boy and one girl in any order. So there's one way of getting a boy, boy. There's one way of getting a girl, girl. But there's two ways of getting a boy and a girl. If you look at three children underneath, you can see that there are three ways. So there's one way, then there are three ways of getting two boys and one girl in any order. And this is two girls and one boy in any order. And then there's one way of getting it. So we've got this pattern one, two, one, one, three, three, one. So you can see there's a, we're going to see what ha happens when we look on this page. Come across. So this pattern um, uh, this pattern you might have seen before, and it's called Pascal's Triangle, okay? So in Pascal's Triangle, we start with one, then we have one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, et cetera. So we're adding the numbers, two plus one is three, one plus one is two, and then it keeps on going forever and ever. Okay, so come across when you're ready. How do we use this to solve problems? So if I toss a coin three times, what's the probability of getting two sixes? Okay, so we've got three times, so we're on the th this line here. So this is, like, this is like no tosses, one toss, two toss, three toss. So we're on this line here. Um, so the first line means there's one, way, there's one way of getting no sixes, there's three ways of getting one six, there's three ways of getting two sixes, and there's one way of getting three sixes. Okay, so to get two sixes, there are three different ways and each of the sixes has a probability of one sixth and you need two of them. And the not sixes is five sixths and you need one of them. So let's just go through it. Two sixes, there are three ways that can happen. This is the probability of getting a six, which is one over six, and you need two of them. This is the probability of getting not a six and you need one of them. And then you just multiply on your calculator and simplify down. So copy that and come across when you're ready. Okay, example two. In a five-child family, find the probability of getting at least four girls. So five children. So we've got none, one, two, three, four, five. So that's why I'm on this line here. Okay, so no girls, one girl, two girls, three girls, four girls, five girls. And we want at least four girls, which means we want four or five. So the four girl answer, the four girl answer, there are five ways that it could happen. And each of the girls is a half and you need four of them. And each of the boys is a half and you need one of them. For the five girl answers, there's only one way that can happen. Each of the girls is a half and we have five girls. And then you just add those two answers together because both answers are correct. And then you just cancel down. So copy that and come across. I think I'm going to show you a different way of doing it as well on, on the next slide. So there's another way of doing it. So instead of building Pascal's triangle, we can use combinations. Okay. So for instance, two girls in a family of three, 
the order is not important. So when we're choosing two from three, that's three C two. And three C two is three, which is the same number as you got from Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle works, combinations works, it doesn't matter which way you do it. So I think we'll have an example. Okay, so I find the probability of getting three girls in a family of six children. Okay, so the probability of three girls is you've got six children and you need three girls, so it's six from three, and that gives you all the, that gives you 20, so there's 20 ways. There's 20 ways of getting three girls in six. Each of the girls has a chance of a half and you need three of them. Each of the boys is a chance of a half and you need three of them because if you've got three girls, you've got three boys. Okay, then just multiply through and you end up with five over 16. So that's pretty straightforward. Copy and come across. Okay, so there's a worksheet on Moodle. Um, this exercise is down the bottom of the page. So down the bottom of Moodle, you'll find these exercises. Okay, I hope you enjoy. See ya.